Here's an AMI This Week shortcut with me, Victoria Nolan. Okay. Oh, look at that one. <gasps> Sarah, they're amazing. That's advocate Julie Martin checking out some greeting card designs. The latest project for this art group for people who are blind and partially sighted in New Glasgow, Nova Scotia. The art group is amazing. I have a, an eye disease called retinitis pigmentosa. Having tactile mediums to work with and then produce something that we all are so proud of, it gives people a real sense of accomplishment. Julie and the town's former artist-in-residence, Sarah Mosher, formed the group. Julie is amazing. She knew that there was a need in the community for um, people who are visually impaired for something them to do. Every week, half a dozen or so participants meet up. Right now, we're working on three projects for a craft sale to try and raise some money for this group. So the local um, home hardware, Proudfoot's home hardware, donated some beautiful hardwood and we have made cutting boards out of them and that's what people are doing right now is sanding them. They've been cut already. We're also taking old, well-loved and used hymn books and making them into angels. Sarah, who is a graduate of the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, grew up with vision loss. I have optic neuritis, which is a disease of the optic nerve. My goal here um, when I applied for grants uh, was to think about visual art, not just in a visual way, but also in other ways, in ways you could hear or touch. Participant Terry Lynn O'Coin comes for more than the art. The reason why I enjoy coming to art is that for first and foremost, mental health and to get out of the house um, and being around people I love to be around. Chris Knowles, another participant, echoes Terry Lynn's thoughts. The thing that I enjoy about coming to art group is being around the people that are in the same situation as myself. The group has been running since last March. One of its biggest projects so far has been a quilt. We got everybody to do two squares or so, so different people wanted to express different things, not necessarily about their visual impairment, but sometimes like about their experience with vision loss. We included braille on a lot of them. It was very tactile. Some of them have eyelashes sticking out. The art class is just one of the many initiatives Julie has helped facilitate. Let's eat. A monthly potluck for members of the blind and partially sighted community is another. Everybody in this room, you are the ones that are doing all the work to bring all this to fruition. This week, there's music. Shout it right out loud. I am loads of good food, and the mayor has dropped by. The town of New Glasgow has been very involved and very um, hopeful of becoming one of the most inclusive communities around. It's nice to just sit and be social. Julie came through some challenges to get to where she is now. Retinitis pigmentosa. I didn't even hear those words until I was 26. Didn't want to accept it. I just carried on with normal life and I didn't want to admit that there was anything wrong. And finally, I had quite the breakdown. I had got to the point where I just couldn't fake it anymore. The mental effects of living with any disability, I think, you can't quantify them. I just felt like, I, where's my value anymore? You know, I'm never, I'm never going to be able to do this, and I'm never going to be able to do that, and I can't do this. And I, I just focused on the negative, and, and it, it was not good. In 2008, seeking a change, Julie and her family moved to Nova Scotia. And when I first moved to Pictou County, I felt disabled. There was no um, public transportation. Um, I found it hard to even walk places on my own because the roads and sidewalks are in disrepair. And there doesn't seem to be anybody around that was dealing with issues that I was dealing with, with vision. My mental wellness was very bad. I was circling the drain. 
in 2015, I decided enough's enough, put your big girl panties on and do something about it. I started volunteering and soon realized that there's an amazing amount of people in this community that are just focused and dedicated on making sure that this community is a healthy, thriving, aging well together community. In helping others, she helped herself. It's definitely been a catalyst to a happier, healthier life, um, doing the volunteer work and, and the, um, I guess, an advocate. I, I definitely would describe myself as a self-appointed advocate for the visually impaired, um, as well as people with other disabilities. Weekly Bowling is another of Julie's initiatives. Rosalind Fiat, who is deaf and blind, attends. I like to come to bowling to meet people, new, new, new thing, have a little chat. I made that step and decided to be brave instead of um, scared. My vision is no longer a barrier. The stuff that's going on in this community now just blows me away.